Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today I'd like to discuss a proposal from the EU that is so bad, I can't tell if they're memeing. I, I can't tell if this is a joke. Honest to God, I have no idea. Let, let's just go through it. So this is Right to Repair. Commission introduces new rights for easy and attractive repairs. This came up about a year and a half ago. I had heard news that one of the top EU regulators was going to be meeting Tim Cook in New York, not far from my business. So, I, you know, I couldn't help myself. I did a video saying, make this happen. Meeting Tim Cook, meet us instead, where I extended an invitation for this regulator to come by my store, maybe get dinner, we can have a conversation. I know that corporate executives and lobbyists like to have robust conversations behind closed doors with legislators and regulators, and I thought, maybe it's time that I do the same thing. And I actually got a response. It was, you know, a minute long video, Dear Lewis and supporters of Right to Repair, thank you for reaching out to me. And you know, here's my response to you regarding Right to Repair. A year and a half later, we get this. Press release, March 22nd, 2023. Right to Repair Commission introduces new consumer rights for easy and attractive repairs. So let's see what this does. So it says, it is a right for consumers to claim repair to producers for products that are technically repairable, like washing machine or TV. Okay, so it means that you can go back to the manufacturer to get a repair, which you can already do. Within the legal guarantee, sellers will be required to offer repair except when it is more expensive than replacement. And that's not going to do anything because the manufacturer always makes the repair more expensive than the replacement. That's what happened here with the CBC News piece, where the issue that the customer had was a display cable that at most repair shops cost $75 to $200 to fix because the part is $5 and it takes 20 minutes to do, and they wanted $2,000 to replace everything in the machine because they have come up with a ridiculous list of procedures on how to proceed when you have a very, very basic problem. The issue is not that the manufacturer is saying no to fixing things. The issue is that the manufacturer is making it impossible for anybody else to do it. So this proposal already begins with a fundamental misunderstanding of the problem. It says, a producer has an obligation to inform consumers about products that they are obliged to repair themselves, which you don't need the producer to tell you you can fix it yourself. You, you already knew that. An online matchmaking repair platform to connect consumers with repairers and sellers of refurbished goods in the area. The platform will enable searches by location and quality standards, helping consumers find attractive offers and boosting visibility for repairers. Hmm, I wonder if this problem was solved. Like, I don't know. 15 years ago by almost every major search engine. If I am searching for a refurbisher in the area, I can search on Google Maps, MacBook repair, and I can see all of the different businesses in my area, where they're located. I could see this guy is 3.9 stars with 92 reviews. Ross and Repair Group is 4.9 stars with 1,567 reviews. This guy is 3.6 stars with 39 reviews. This guy is you know, five stars with four reviews. See, you, you can actually look up all the different businesses in the area. This problem was solved. 15 years ago, you had Google, you had City Search, you have Facebook, yeah, all these other platforms. Some of them have their pluses, some of them have their minuses. But that's not the problem we're looking to solve here. Customers have been finding me just fine for the past 15 years. A European repair information form, which consumers will be able to request from any repairer, bring in transparency to repair conditions and price, and make it easier for consumers to compare repair offers. A European repair information form. Hmm. A repair information form where you can request information or get prices. I wonder if that was solved over 25 years ago with the invention of the website. If you go to my website, which you can click onto once you've clicked on my listing on here to see after seeing my reputation and what area I'm in, you can see the prices of keyboard replacement depending on the model that you have. And if you want to contact us, if you want to reach out to us, you can click the contact button that exists on most websites on the internet today and fill in your name, your phone number, what you have and what's wrong with it, or you can email me directly. This is a form that you should be allowed to request from any repairer, which means that I now have to keep a particular standard form on file to provide you if you ask for it. So you're actually making life harder for the repair shop. Rather than allowing me to have my own website with my own prices and have my own contact form, I now have to have one that is streamlined through your system that is not gonna help me get parts, that is not gonna help me get schematics, that is not gonna help me get the software necessary to pair a part to a device. You're making my life more difficult in exchange, I get nothing? Are you serious? This is meme tier legislation. It solves no problems. It helps nobody. Apple would be inconvenienced by this. I would be inconvenienced by this. My customer would be inconvenienced by this. For nothing. Nothing. This is not new. There is no new bureaucracy that is needed for any of this. A European quality standard for repair services will be developed to help consumers identify repairers who commit to a higher quality. This easy repair standard will be open to all repairers across the EU willing to commit to minimum quality standards, for example, based on duration or availability of products. This is accepting 
the manufacturer's framing. The manufacturer will always say, we can't have independents doing the job because we don't know if you're good enough. And one of the things that I've said on this channel many times is that you're not good enough as it is. Your repairs suck. When you fix U8900 problems on a MacBook, you are literally putting a piece of rubber there rather than resoldering it. When you fix a 2011 MacBook Pro with GPU issues, you are roasting the thing to the point that the board turns brown. The manufacturer is not good at repairing their own products. They're trying to fix the wrong problem. Or, as my friend Daniel Smullen says, this is like trying to solve world hunger by requiring Michelin star restaurants to write the price on their menu. It sounds good, but it doesn't solve the problem. I'll give you an example of the problem with the newest MacBook. You know how laptops, when you close the laptop, it will turn off because it knows it's closed? That's because they have a magnet in the lid. There'll be usually be a magnet on the side of the lid, and there'll be a hull sensor, which for people who are not technically inclined, think of it like a magnet sensor. It senses when a magnet is near it. There'll be a magnet sensor on the base. So when you have it open, the magnet sensor doesn't sense the magnet. When you close it, the magnet is now touching the magnet sensor, and it knows to turn off the machine. When this broke in older devices, you could just unplug it and plug a new one in. In newer devices from around 2013 onwards, this was soldered onto the motherboard, but no problem. You could just desolder the old one and solder in a new one, and your problem was solved. With the newer machines, if you replace this part, even if you replace it with an OEM in the newest MacBook, it doesn't work until you run Apple's proprietary software that they don't make available to independents in order to pair it. It's paired. I can't fix a sleep sensor anymore. So what I have to do when it's corroded is I have to rip the old one off the board, I have to rip all the pieces off of it, take the legs of it that are falling apart and use a fine tip soldering iron and kind of file it as if I'm filing my nails to see if I can get to something that I can connect to and then reconnect it. And if that works, great. If that doesn't work, I have to tell the customer your laptop can't sleep anymore, even though I put a new sleep sensor in there because of what they've done. This does not solve our problem of lack of parts availability, and when parts are available, the manufacturer serializing them so that it will not work again until you use their software. Same thing with John Deere. The customer has repaired their own $300,000 tractor, but it won't work again until the dealer shows up to plug their computer in. None of these people were complaining about the lack of availability of reviews or repair information or pricing from independents. You can go to an independent repair provider's website and find the price right there. If you want to contact the independent, you can do it right here on their website. People that make a living off of providing good service tend to make sure that there's a way for you to easily contact them to get that service. And if you want to figure out if they're good or not, there are many websites that will help you in doing so. Maybe this is just a sign that I don't understand EU culture, but I can't tell if this is a meme, if this is just done on purpose to say that right to repair was passed when it wasn't, or if they actually think this is good. It's kind of like New York personalities versus California personalities. Like, you know, they, they say this a lot, that in California people say, oh, hi, wow, it's really nice to meet you. Oh, wow, what you're doing there is really amazing. Damn, that's really cool, man. I gotta hit you up. Give me your number. It would be great to contact you again in the future. Let's be friends. And then when they walk away five minutes later, they're like, yeah, I can't stand that guy. Don't invest in his company. Whereas in New York, somebody will meet you and say, hey, how's it going? Oh, you're that guy. I can't effing stand you. I hate you. Screw you. Here's why I hate you. Here's why I think you should rot in hell. By the way, I'll see you tomorrow. Pleasure meeting you, and they'll keep walking. See, the difference between the California approach and the New York approach is that in the New York approach, at least you'll know that the person hates you. At least you'll know where they stand. They may be rude, they may be an asshole, but you know where you stand. And that's what I can say for a lot of American politics. So, for instance, in Nebraska, when a legislator agrees to meet with Gay Gordon Byrne and myself in 2017, and then he cancels the meeting right before the hearing, last minute, right as he gets a donation from the opposition lobbyist, Mola Roback, and that's the lobbyist that testified against the bill, and she gave you 2,500 bucks, it's like, huh, okay, I can kind of put the pieces together there, I know what side you're on, that makes life easy for me. Another example, Kathy Holchel butchering the right to repair bill as opposition lobbyists literally write the bill for her. The opposition lobbyists wrote the right to repair bill and destroyed it. I know which side you're on now. That's great. Or on the flip side of that issue, Tom Brandt, there was a group of legislators that I pictured here that literally laughed at us. They laughed at us and the farmers that showed up to testify that day. This one in here, in particular, laughed the most. So what this gentleman did named Tom Brandt, he's a farmer, he ran against her in his district, he won, and he reintroduced the bill that she laughed at. I know which side he's on. He's on our side. I can usually tell whether somebody is on our side or on the side of the opposition. 
here I honestly can't tell. I honestly can't tell. You think this matters. You think this solves anything. Parts not being available. Manufacturers serializing parts to the device. So even once you've finally gone through the Shawshank Redemption sewer of shit to find a supplier for the part that you need, it won't work because it doesn't match the original. These are not problems. These are problems of the internet of 1994, not of the internet of 2023. I have no idea. This has to be a meme. This has to be a meme. This can't be real. This is useless. This is literally worse than useless. Now, I would vote against this because what this does is it creates a new bureaucracy that solves absolutely nothing. This is almost like, this is like dealing with New York State Department of Taxation or Finance or the Supreme Court. In all seriousness, you're going to have to have somebody to manage this system. You're going to have to have somebody create the form. You're going to have a committee that tries to come up with what the information form should have on it. For this quality standard shit, you're going to have to have a group of people sit by and come up with a, all of this is going to require additional bureaucracy additional people working, and it solves nothing. It's not even that I think this is, I'm not, I'm not even neutral on this. I, I would vote against this. I would actually vote against this. This is, this solves nothing. This is useless. And the reason I'm doing this video is because similar to the John Deere Memorandum of Understanding, one of the things that I learned is that if you don't come out early when it comes to these things, is that the news will cover it as if it is a win. So in this video that I did a few weeks ago, John Deere Memo, farmers have not won, but that won't stop the news from pretending they did. There were a bunch of news articles that came out where people were saying that farmers won right to repair. We're good. We won. We got what we were looking for. And the reality couldn't have been further from the truth. All of these news outlets, Deere gives farmers long sought ability to repair their tractors. At some point, BBC fell for it. BBC said, US farmers, win right to repair for John Deere equipment because what they did was all of these journalists, all these horrible news sites, they read the headline without actually reading the content. And then I'll get pinged on Reddit 10 times that they saying, Louis, you want right to repair? How does it feel? We didn't, win. we didn't win anything. So the reason I'm coming out early and strong against this is that people understand that what you're reading here is not a win. This is a joke. This is a joke. This solves nothing. This does nothing. This accomplishes nothing. This does not increase the ability of your local neighborhood repair shop to be able to fix anything. As Daniel Smolin said, this is like solving world hunger by saying that prices need to be on the menu of a five-star restaurant. Am I being harsh here? I don't think I'm being harsh here. I think this is useless. I think it, if, if it honest, if it genuinely took from October 2021 to March of 2023, to come up with this? Oh, I'm glad I didn't put any effort into, into the EU. <laughs> I'm glad. I get I, I'd rather just have my local politician tell me to go fuck myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'd rather just have the... I'd, I, I'd literally rather have C.T. Wilson call me a racist. I would rather have C.T. Wilson call me a racist for saying that he is wrong for conflating firmware with source code. I would rather that than this, because at least I know what side he's on. He is on the side of his own personal ego. But at least I get it. With this, I have no idea. Like, with, with this, I, I don't even have an indication of what's going on. Like, are you controlled opposition? Do you not agree with me ideologically? Are you bought? I, I, are you just incompetent? Like, I have no idea. I don't even know where to start. I have no idea what the incentive structure is to spend 18 months writing a useless proposal that makes life worse for every single party involved. And dare I say it, I believe that it actually takes work to come up with a proposal that makes life worse for the consumer, the independent, and the manufacturer all at once. And here's the sad part about this. Here's the sad part about this. This is going to be used as fodder for people to say, there is no point. Regulation will 100% of the time makes things worse. And if somebody pointed to the regulation always making things worse and pointed to this case, I wouldn't be able to disagree with them. This actually does. If you take a look at the bills that I put out there, it doesn't require that a repair shop use a special form and register in a special database and, you know, have uh, the none of this. It just says what you make available to your own repair centers, make available to independents and consumers. It's that simple. It's a very, very short, basic, and simple thing. It does not require new bureaucracy in any way, shape, or form. There's not going to have to be some sort of new commission to come up with standards for things or any of that nonsense like this. The bills that we put forth in states are very, very liberty-respecting. 
make available to consumers and independents the stuff that you make available to your service centers. How you do that, we don't care. Quality standards, not, not, don't care. New websites, new forms, new reviews, don't, no, none of that. Just make things available. This entire proposal, as it is written, is an argument for anarcho-capitalism. I shit you not. It is that bad. The EU is a funny place, man. It really is. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.